launching on September 23rd. Have an exciting one. This is the Apple Watch Ultra and we're gonna unbox it but also answer all those questions that we've had since the announcement. So let's do the honors. Apple makes this too easy. You actually don't need a box cutter. The packaging is already very different from what we're familiar with. This really feels like it's made from recycled paper. So this is the Ultra. They put it in orange and I got the White Ocean Band. Wow, they are really showcasing this as a very outdoorsy watch. What's this? This is a brochure. Wow, so this is like a little brochure on the Apple Watch Ultra. So I just bought this Apple MacBook Pro fully spec'd and it didn't ship with a brochure, but apparently when you get the Apple Watch Ultra, they kind of give you a welcome brochure. So you have the packaging for the Apple Watch Ultra. There's only one model, the 49 millimeter. And this is for the band. I guess this is the, what, latitude and longitude for Cupertino. And look at that, that's the watch. Wow, it's light. It's beefy. We'll compare it to my Garmin and also to the Apple Watch Series 6. You get your Apple Watch charger cable. It's nice that the Ultra is a more durable watch and they went along with a more durable cable. Let's go ahead and turn this on. So to power it on, it's this guy right over here set up myself, set up for a family member. Connecting your Apple Watch, this may take a moment. Ooh. Signing into your account, this may take a few minutes. Okay, you guys already know, make sure that your personal fitness and health data is up to date. Apple Pay, I'm gonna set that up later. During the setup process, it actually asks you what would you like to customize the action button to with a selection of workout, stopwatch, waypoint, backtrack, dive, and flashlight. And while it's loading, let's actually open up the Apple Watch band. This is the white ocean band. It's actually really stretchy and it gives me a very similar feel actually to my Garmin Epix band right now. Let me go ahead and put the Ultra on my left hand. It's a little bit tedious to get on, but I guess that's the point so that it doesn't fall off when you're diving, swimming. But let's go ahead and answer the questions that you guys left in my last video on the Apple Watch and also some other ones that I saw floating around. Hopefully help you guys out if you wanna get this watch or maybe pass, maybe decide to go with a Series 8 or just stay with what you guys have. So, so, so this first question, it's not from a YouTube comment. It's from Casey Neistat that's been circulating a lot on YouTube and also on Reddit everywhere really, and it's can you turn off the touch screen? False positives were my biggest beef with Apple Watch. I use Garmin now, love it, and it has a touch screen that I can toggle on and off with a hard button. So right now with the Apple Watch, that's one thing. It doesn't appear that in the settings, it's just like every other Apple Watch. There's water mode, and then you can also turn on assistive touch but it's not like a Garmin. On Garmin's, you can, and I don't want this to be a comparison video, but the answer is no. On a Garmin, you can turn off the touch screen and it can function just like a regular watch. You can control everything from the multiple hard buttons that, that it has. Second question, does anybody know if we'll be able to change the watch faces to normal ones? I don't want those compass ones to be the only options. Um, yeah, if you actually update from an existing Apple Watch, all your wallpapers that you could have customized or that you had previously are on your existing Apple Watch, so you don't have to use the new Compass wallpaper. 
Another popular question is if you can use the watch bands on your previous Apple Watch on the new 49 millimeter. So, I mean, let's actually try it. Let's see how it looks. So the 44 millimeter band fits on the Apple Watch, but there's a gap. This is a 44 millimeter. So if you had a 40 millimeter watch, you could probably expect the gap to be bigger, but there is a click there. So yeah, it fits as long as you're okay with that gap. So screen protector and case on an Apple Watch Ultra. I think, am I getting a case or a screen protector? So I'll respond two different ways. First is the watch is big. It's 49 millimeters. I do, it's not that heavy, which is great, but it is really massive. And I have a medium sized wrist. So I definitely am not gonna get a case for it. I mean, it is a rugged Apple watch. If anything, my second point is if you feel like you still might break it or you're worried about the screen, what I would suggest is at that point looking at Apple Care. It's, um, I believe it's $99 and it's 79 if you need to go in for a repair. So that might be your best route. I did see an article, I think, on Engadget that if you did to need to do any repairs and you didn't have Apple Care, it's, I believe, $500. So if you're worried about it breaking or the screen cracking at that point, probably look into Apple Care for sure. But that pretty much answers all the questions from last week's video. If you have another question, please put it in the comment section below and I'll address it. If you like these kind of videos, I do tech videos, but for us fitness enthusiasts in mind. So if that's you, I invite you to subscribe, hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. I have the AirPods Pro 2 in one of these boxes. So I'm gonna go ahead, open that up and you can expect a video probably this weekend I'm going to charge the Apple Watch Ultra. I got tomorrow a 10 mile run, Sunday a lifting session. Let me use it a little bit more and I'll have a better review video if I'm going to keep it or what are my thoughts. Hopefully help you guys out. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.